Hey everyone, it's Keith here, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at what I carry in my camera bag. To give you a bit of context, I'm a product photographer and a content creator. I mostly do studio product photography for my client work, and I also create everyday carry content, which includes everything you see on my Instagram page and this YouTube channel. In my day to day, I normally throw this camera bag in the car when I'm traveling from home to the studio. Once in a while, I'll be doing on location shoots, and that's when I'll spend most of my time carrying this backpack. The backpack I'm currently using is the Low Pro Protectic 350AW. This is the first version that came out in 2014 and I think I bought mine in 2017. I'll share my thoughts on this backpack at the end of the video, but for now, let's flip the camera and go through my setup. In the external side pockets, I store a Muji business card holder for my business cards. I don't think I've ever given anyone my business cards, but they are there just in case. On the other side, I store a Wesson MT. The Wesson MT is a titanium multi-tool with a bottle opener, prior, and screwdriver. It's very lightweight and doesn't take up much pocket space. I normally use this to screw on any tripod plates and other accessories. I also carry a few Allen keys in this pocket to screw on accessories to my small rig cage and other camera accessories. Moving into the backpack, there's a laptop sleeve that fits up to a 13 inch laptop. I mostly use the laptop sleeve to carry my iPad mini 6. Sometimes I carry my MacBook Pro if I'm planning on using a one bag setup for the day, but I try to avoid it because this laptop adds a lot of extra weight to my setup. On the back panel, there are a bunch of see-through pockets. In the first row of pockets, I store an extra set of lens caps and a USB-C cable. In the other pocket, I carry all of my SD cards and store them in the plastic case that came with the card. I have a bunch of cards with different speeds and capacities. I usually use the high speed cards for video work and slow cards for photography since the workflow is slightly less intensive. Moving down to the second row, it's one big pocket. In here, I have lots of step up and step down filter rings. I also store my 82mm variable ND filter by Koken. I think this filter reduces the exposure by 1 to 8 stops. I bought this a long time ago when I was still using my Nikon D750 and 16 to 35mm lens. This filter hasn't gotten much use over the years because I'm usually in a studio setting. The only time I would ever use this filter is when I'm using my wide angle lens for outdoor video work. Moving to the main section of the camera bag, in this space right here is where I store my Fujifilm X-T3 with a small rig cage. The X-T3 is my main camera for client work and content creation. It's a great camera for stills and I love shooting on the classic chrome color profile. I pretty much shoot everything exclusively on classic chrome and I'll make small adjustments in Lightroom and Premiere Pro. I've been using this camera for the past two years and I really enjoy the photography experience of this camera. I also used X-T3 to film all of my YouTube videos and the video quality is still very good in 2022. The only downside of this camera is the continuous autofocus in video. It's not very reliable and the autofocus performance is very lens dependent. The autofocus can be great with the kit lens but terrible with older lenses like the 35mm 1.4. Besides the poor video autofocus, I love using the X-T3. In the future, I'd love to switch to the Sony A7 Mark IV or the Fuji X-H2. But for now, the X-T3 does everything I need for my content creation and client work. Attached to the X-T3 is the 18 to 55 mm kit lens. The kit lens has surprisingly good build quality compared to brands like Nikon and Canon. This is one of my most used lenses ever since I switched to the Fuji system. One of my first experiences with this lens was a holiday in Hong Kong. I shot a bunch of cityscape and street photography with this lens. The focal length is versatile and has a decent minimum focusing distance for close-ups. Over the years, I noticed that this lens isn't very sharp for photos and there is some color fringing when shooting up close. It's very noticeable when I'm shooting close-ups of watch dials and you can see blue, purple and orange fringing around the edges. At the moment, I primarily use it for video work. The sharpness is decent for video, and this lens has one of the best continuous autofocus out of all of my lenses. If you're planning on getting into the Fuji system, I highly recommend getting this kit lens over the 16 to 50mm XC lens. In the same compartment as the X-T3, I also store two filters here. The first one is a BW variable ND filter. The filter thread on this is 58mm, and I use it on the kit lens for my outdoor video work. This ND filter reduces 1 to 5 stops of exposure, which is quite handy and works well with a maximum aperture of f4 on the kit lens. The other filter I have is a BW circular polarizer. If you shoot a lot outdoors, I recommend getting a circular polarizer. This filter can pretty much cut down or remove reflections from shining surfaces like water, 
glass and the sky. For most filters like ND, graduated ND or ProMess filters, you can replicate or fix it in post. However, reflections are very hard to fix, especially for video. For outdoor work, this filter is a must for me. In the next compartment, I store my Fuji 56mm 1.2 lens. Before I niche down to product photography, I used to shoot portraits every now and then. The bokeh at f1.2 is very smooth, but sometimes I found that the images weren't very sharp. I usually stop down to f2 or 2.8 just to be safe. The autofocus speed is decent and the minimum focusing distance isn't great for close-ups. This lens gets used the least because it's the same focal length as the kit lens at 55mm. The only time I would use this lens is when I need an even more blurry background if the kit lens at f4 isn't blurry enough. The 56mm 1.2 is a fantastic portrait lens but not ideal for product photography. In the side compartment, I store my three-legged thing L bracket here. I don't have a small rig handle and sometimes I use this L bracket as a temporary handle for handheld video work. I use this bracket all of the time when I'm shooting on my tripod setup. This bracket allows me to change from shooting landscape to portrait in a few seconds without messing around with the tripod head. The bracket is super convenient and speeds up my workflow. If you want to see a video on my tripod setup for product photography, let me know in the comments below. Beneath the L bracket, I usually carry my Nikon 105mm macro lens. I've been getting rid of my Nikon gear and this is the last lens I own. Attached to the lens is a KNF adapter for Nikon G lenses. This adapter allows me to control the aperture on the lens, but it doesn't have any markings for a precise aperture. I only use this lens on a tripod for macro work because it's manual focus only and the optical image stabilization doesn't work with the Fuji. Moving to the next compartment, I have my Fujifilm X-T2 with a 10 to 24 wide angle lens. The X-T2 is the first camera I used in the Fuji ecosystem. Many years ago, I hit a creative plateau in my photography journey. At the time, I was a perfectionist and I felt that my Nikon D750 didn't fulfill me creatively. The camera felt like a computer and I didn't want to waste my precious full frame camera on random snaps and photos. Eventually, I decided to mix things up and picked up a Fujifilm X-T2 with a kit lens. This camera completely changed my perspective on photography. When I first used this camera, I treated it more like a toy camera to document things and shoot for fun. The X-T2 made me want to shoot things and sparked my love for photography again. It helped me get out of the creative plateau and I loved it so much that I ended up selling my Nikon gear and switched to Fuji. Right now, I use it as my backup stills camera because the video capability isn't great. Attached to the X-T2 is the 10 to 24 mm lens. This is another lens I don't use very often for my work. I usually photograph small objects and the field of view is too wide. I mostly use this lens for BTS photos or video work. It has optical image stabilization, which is very useful for video work. The image quality is quite sharp, even when it's wide open. Maybe when I travel more in the future, I'm certainly bringing this lens with me to do street and landscape photography. In the next compartment, I have the Fujifilm 35mm 1.4 lens, and below the lens, I store extra Fuji batteries. This lens was one of the first few lenses released for the Fujifilm X-mount. This 35mm lens has a rough 50mm equivalent on a full frame. The field of view is not too wide and not too telephoto. It's just perfect. I use this lens for most of my client work and all of the photos on my Instagram. The image quality is very good for stills, even though there is some chromatic aberration when shot wide open. The single autofocus point works well, but the continuous AF isn't great. When using this lens on the X-T3, it's an awesome setup for street photography. This lens is very loud and clunky, but it has its own charm, which is why it's my favorite Fujifilm lens. In the top compartment, I use this space to carry any accessories I will need depending on the shoot I'm doing. Most of the time, I will carry an air blower to blow the dust off my lenses and the products I'm shooting. Another piece of gear I carry is the JJC wireless remote. I don't recommend this product because it broke within six months of using it. If anyone knows a good wireless remote for Fujifilm, please let me know in the comments. Next up, I carry this Mikey macro extension tube. Sometimes I don't bring the Nikon macro lens and use this instead. This extension tube is small, lightweight, and has decent image quality. It's not as good as the macro lens, but for Instagram, it's good enough. The extension tube retains aperture control, autofocus, and optical image stabilization. I highly recommend this because it's an affordable and quick solution for macro photography. Next up is my Atomos Shinobi, NPF battery, small rig adapter, and a micro HDMI cable. 
My Fuji X-T3 doesn't have a flip out screen and I use this setup a lot when I'm shooting these YouTube videos and my wrist shots. I mainly use it to check the framing before I hit record or take a photo. This monitor has tons of features but I only use a handful like waveforms, zebras and to preview lots on my footage. When I got this monitor, there weren't many options for a 5 inch monitor. Right now, there are tons more options from brands like Field World and Andy Cine. If you do a lot of video work, a field monitor is a very useful piece of gear to have in your kit. That's everything I carry in my camera bag, so now let's talk about the ProTactic 350. I've had this since 2017 and it's held up very well over the years. I've taken this bag with me on countless shoots. The backpack has been tossed around and dropped on the floor and it's still in great condition. The build quality is very good and offers substantial protection for my gear inside. This backpack has a few quick access points to the interior. For example, it has side access as well as a top access through the hard shell. I don't like using these and primarily access the bag through the back panel. When it's fully loaded with a laptop, this backpack can feel extremely heavy. Even though I only carry the backpack for a few minutes, I don't enjoy the experience. In terms of comfortability, the backpack feels decent. The mesh back panel and straps have thinned out a lot over the years. The sternum and waist strap doesn't have much padding, but they work well to take the weight off my shoulders. On the front and side panel of the bag, there are plenty of molly straps to attach a water bottle, tripod and pouches. This backpack came with a few accessories, but I don't use them unless I know I'll be needing them on the shoot. Overall, I don't have any negative things to say about this bag. It has great build quality, offers good protection and feels somewhat comfortable. However, for my current style of work, I think a duffel bag might work better for me. In a studio environment, I'm usually working out of the bag rather than with the bag over my shoulders. I feel like having quick access to my gear without needing to open the back panel might be more convenient. I know Boundary Supply and Peak Design have a duffel bag for camera gear, but if you have any good recommendations, let me know. That wraps up everything I carry in my camera bag and thoughts on this backpack. I haven't made any drastic changes in the past two years because I'm not sure if I'm switching to Sony or upgrading to the Fujifilm X-H2. At the moment, my setup is working very well for me and I'm making the most out of it for my content creation and client work. I'd love to know your thoughts on my setup. Would you change anything? Also, would you like to see more photography content? Let me know in the comments. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, you can check out the videos on screen to see my EDC or sling setup. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.